Hello everyone. So I want to share with you <clears throat> some thoughts. This is a thought experiment, but it's about the word, the meaning of the word perpetual motion. This is very, very important because, you know, people can be afraid to even use that word because they think, oh, there's, there can't be any perpetual motion. You know, instead of saying, well, what does the, the word mean, right? And when inventors use the word, what do, you, what do they mean? And when uh, people that try to say that there's no such thing as a perpetual motion machine, when they say that, what do they mean? But never forget, language is for the user, right? Language is for the user. Now, if someone's trying to use perpetual motion and use the mind as a weapon against learning and a weapon against thinking, well, I want to look at who's, who's using the word that's trying to create something. Who's making something new and expanding on education, right? And moving science forward, right? Not backwards. Not saying don't learn, stop learning, but saying let's look at something new from a new perspective. Let's look in the, at something in a new way. So the inventors, when they, say, when they say they make a perpetual motion machine, and usually they're not even saying that. Usually what they say is I can make a machine that runs off of cosmic energy. It's powered by nature's uh, perpetual wheel works, the perpetual wheel works of nature. But there's that word perpetual, right? So right away, someone's going to say, someone that's against what I'm going to call learning and moving science forward will say, oh, there's no such thing. You can't do that. And so I, I looked at both uses of the word. There was two. There was basically two categories of the, of the meaning of the word. One category was is the, the bullies attacking, right? I'm, I'm saying bullies, right? Thought bullies, right? It's like a thought bully or, or, or an edu or a intelligence bully, like someone that wants to s stop people from looking beyond what we know, right? But it turns out that what we know is more than many realize, right? So let's look at that. What I found was, well, let me go ahead and just read this to you and then we'll talk about it more. Let's see how this goes. I may want to talk about it while I'm reading it to you, but maybe I should just read it to you and then we can talk about it afterward. We're already at two minutes and 33 seconds into this video and I haven't started reading yet. So I said thought experiment. The meaning of the word perpetual motion threw away the good. Good equals perpetual motion machine requires maintenance. While overstepping its reach to perfection, the perfect perpetual motion machine is not permitted to receive regular maintenance, nor any maintenance ever. Although the universe maintains itself, maintains itself, or is self-maintaining, forward slash maintained, right? So self-maintaining or self-maintained. If the universe is self-maintained and its energy cannot be destroyed nor created, and the universe is a closed system, then it appears that the universe is a perfect perpetual motion machine. However, if the universe is an open system, and then in parentheses, receives its energy from somewhere else, then it is a good perpetual motion machine. This is quite interesting indeed. I vote for good, and I vote for experimenting with good replication of the way in which energy, the way in which nature utilizes good energy flow. The inappropriate and perverse overstepped reach for perfection threw away the entire energetic universe and said that only the perpetual motion machine itself is permitted to exist. Stating that the perpetual motion machine is not permitted to be powered by the perpetual wheel works of nature's open supersystem. I vote for keeping the universe into the equation. In order to be perpetual, all perpetual machines must be powered by nature's infinite possibility, infinite inevitability universe. It is the nature of infinite potential, the very essence of the nature of infinite symbiotic energy flow. Infinite symbiotic energy flow potential equals the entire material universe and infinitely beyond is powered by empty space, cosmic energy, virtual particle flux fields, gravity waves, tachyon waves, dark energy, dark matter, infinite simultaneous zero-point fields, Dirac C. While simultaneously, 
cosmic energy, zero point fields, virtual particle flux fields, dark energy, dark matter, gravity waves, and tachyon waves, Dirac C, are theorized to be powered directly by the energy that is the material universe. Smiles are free energy open systems. Actual potential and actual real. In this instance, potential equals actual, and potential and actual equal infinity, actually. What shall we create today? I hope you have a wonderful day. Wonderful equals full of wonder. Smiley face. And eight likes. So, okay, so, this is very, very important because the, it turns out that when perpetual motion means that something still needs maintenance, just like all things do, and energy is coming from the environment, which we all understand that that's the way the universe works, then perpetual motion actually is possible. And all that the inventor is saying when they say they've made it a machine that can keep going without plugging it in, or maybe plug it in at first and then once it's going, you unplug it, right? Is that that's just it. They're saying that it's not plugged in anymore to make it keep working. Why does that have to be attacked? And why do we have to falsely accuse someone of claiming something they're not claiming at all? No inventor's claiming that their, their system is not being powered by the perpetual wheelworks of nature. No inventor is claiming that their system does not need bearing maintenance, oil once in a while, and parts changed as needed. No inventor has said that. So why, why are bullies getting the spotlight? Why do they get to own the definition of perpetual motion? They don't. No one owns a definition. Language is for the user. So the question is always, what do you mean when you say that your system can run? What we see is inventors 100% completely invented, uh, dedicated and committed to their invention and their work. And they think about this day and night, day and night, day and night, and they, they focus their mind on it and they find a way to do the impossible, right? And this has been done hundreds of thousands of times over hundreds of years, right? And this is not someone that's necessarily going to be able to defend themselves or have the energy or time to defend themselves. And should they have to? No. The job of the inventor is to make their invention. That's it. But they have a new job, I propose. While you're taking those first steps, this is, this is my idea that I have right now. Now, it's not a new idea, and it's not mine. I'm just saying it that way. But it's not an original idea or anything, but I'm going to share my thoughts with you on this. This is to all inventors, and this includes anyone that has an idea about something. Okay, if you want to make something, I'm talking to you. You're an inventor, okay? You're, you're inventing some, an idea. You're practicing the laws of creation, right? Which is that you have a drive to create something, to make something. Especially if it's impossible or very difficult, right? Because we all know the difficult is achieved at once. The impossible takes a little longer, right? We all know that. Or if we didn't, we do now. Okay, create a YouTube channel. Turn the comments off. Turn off all contact, any kind of contact. Go through there, and if you have to contact YouTube and ask them how to help you through that process, do that, okay? Make videos sharing your thought process. You could share drawings. You could share words, poetry, philosophy, anything that describes what you're feeling in that moment about the journey of discovery, what your challenges are. You could share what questions you ask yourself before you go to sleep. What problem are you trying to solve that you wake up with the solution, right? Because a lot of people do that. They go to sleep with a question in their mind, something they want to overcome, a challenge they want to overcome with their invention, right? It could be anything, though. And they wake up with, with something that moves them toward the solution or with the solution, right? I mean, look at John Searle. John Searle learned how to travel faster than the speed of light in his dreams. That's where the Searle effect generator came from, from dreams. 
and he translated those dreams into a mechanical, you know, magnet generator, which creates its own gravity field, which repels Earth's gravity, right? So it's not anti-gravity, it's an actual gravity generator, a gravity field generator, which naturally repels the Earth's gravity. So it's going to go right through the roof, and that's what it did. And he made a very, very crude system at first. Imagine if John Searle shared his process, if he had the internet back when he started his inventions, right? And he shared his thought process and his research and all the, what he learned, you know, about how to do this and the different ways to do it. Not with the real nice expensive magnet systems we see on the internet, right? Not those real expensive systems, but just a crude version of that where we spin magnetic fields circularly. Magnetic fields within magnetic fields, right? different ways of spinning very fast spin within spin within spin keep spinning right and then sending uh um pulsed frequencies around that that spin area on the sides on the sides and see what those pulses and that energy when you introduce those energy fields around that spinning rotate rotating magnetic field how does that cause it to move? Can it cause it to move in different directions so we could have complete control, right, of what something does, right? I'm thinking of it right now as like, uh, I don't know if it's correct to say six axis, but it's like six sided, six gravity field generators, right? Top, bottom, like a box, like having a box and having one on each side of that box. And then you can control which way something moves, right? in every direction. Forward, back, up, down, left, right. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's why I'm calling it a six axis. But it's probably one, two, three, four. But it's six different gravity field generators. That's the way I think of it. So um, yeah, perpetual motion is not something that's impossible. But the question is, how do we make it usable? And we make it usable by saying, oh, it needs maintenance like all other motors do. It will need parts changed and it is powered by cosmic energy. It's powered by energy throughout space and time, right? Because energy is everywhere connected. Okay, everyone, see you in the next video and I hope you have a great day. Bye.